Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Saudi Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the occasion of his appointment as Prime Minister following a royal order issued by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty congratulated His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, wishing him further success in serving the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and its people and make further achievements under the leadership of the Saudi King. His Majesty the King wished the Saudi King lasting good health and happiness. His Majesty praised the depth of the deep-rooted historic relation linking the two kingdoms and their peoples. The Royal Court announced that at the invitation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Holiness Pope Francis will pay a historic four-day official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain on November the 3rd. His Holiness will participate in the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue East and West for Human Coexistence to be held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The Royal Court looks forward to welcoming His Holiness to the Kingdom of Bahrain, acknowledging his sincere efforts to promote a culture of dialogue and peaceful coexistence. The Royal Court announced that at the invitation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Grand Imam of Al Hassar Al Sharif, His Eminence Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Al Tayeb, will visit the Kingdom of Bahrain on November the 3rd. The Grand Imam will participate in the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue East and West for Human Coexistence, to be held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The Royal Court looks forward to welcoming the Grand Imam to the Kingdom of Bahrain, acknowledging his sincere efforts to promote a culture of dialogue and peaceful coexistence. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been a place in which all religions, sects and faith live in harmony, respect and peaceful coexistence. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been a land of peace, tolerance and coexistence when it comes to different religions and faiths. All religions and sects live together in peace, harmony and freedom, which made Bahrain a safe place to live, work, teach and perform religious rites and beliefs. His Majesty the King pays considerable attention to human rights and exerts utmost efforts to advance the Kingdom in this field for his belief in the importance of religious freedom and peaceful coexistence. Bahrain has established the foundation of the state of institutions and law and ensured social justice and human values in addition to its adoption of many national plans concerned with civil, political, economic, social, cultural and human rights fields in addition to the formation of a number of official bodies specialized in the management of human rights such as the establishment of the National Institutions for Human Rights, the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the launch of the King Hamad Medal for Peaceful Coexistence. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, for his appointment as Prime Minister following the Royal Order. His Royal Highness wished His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman success in carrying out his duties and achieving Saudi Arabia's progress and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness highlighted the long-standing relations between the two kingdoms and their peoples, as well as the importance of furthering bilateral cooperation and coordination at various levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishedi, at Asaka Palace, Tokyo. 
His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of Bahrain-Japan relations, noting the Kingdom's commitment to furthering bilateral ties with the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness and Kishida explored opportunities to advance Bahrain-Japan strategic partnership in view of the long-standing relations and progress made in various fields. During the meeting, prospects for joint cooperation, the latest regional and international economic developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the Board of Trustees meeting at Rifa Palace. His Highness Sheikh Isa emphasised the importance of continuing to strengthen education and training in Bahrain to prepare the Kingdom for current and future development needs. His Highness highlighted the unwavering support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the Kingdom's educational sector. His Highness stressed the importance of continuing the empowerment of Bahraini citizens through education and training to ensure that citizens remain a priority in the labour market. His Highness commended the efforts made in achieving the Trust goals, which include providing opportunities and support for Bahraini citizens to continue their academic journeys and fulfil their ambitions through higher education. During the meeting, the agenda topics and the Trust plans to foster sustainability and efficiency in the work streams to support students in achieving higher education goals were reviewed. The Chairman of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with several of the Trust Scholars for this academic year 2022-2023 to at Rifa Palace. His Highness Sheikh Isa noted that the Kingdom is committed to developing its education system as part of its comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness noted the developing of the Kingdom's education system and promoting innovation and creativity will benefit Bahrain's future generations. His Highness commended the ambition of Bahraini students to expand their skill sets and the determination to overcome challenges, a notable characteristic of Team Bahrain. His Highness highlighted the commitment of Bahraini students to pursue higher education and contribute to the Kingdom's comprehensive development. The scholars conveyed their appreciation for His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman's support and commitment to empowering Bahraini youth through the opportunities offered by the Trust. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Arash bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met with a number of heads and representatives of Majlises in Bahrain in the presence of senior officials from the Interior Ministry and a number of media figures. The Minister delivered the following speech. <laughs> أجواء من الوئام والتآخي والطمأنينة بفضل الرؤى الحكيمة والنظرة الاستشرافية الكريمة لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعا الذي جعل من إرادته السياسية الطموح موردا متدفقا لمقدرات الثقة الوطنية وبناء حاضر مطمئن 
وصياقة مستقبل مشرق للمواطن البحريني لتمضي المسيرة النهضوية الحديثة بخطى ثابتة وعزيمة واثقة ويسعدني في هذا اليوم الالتقاء بأصحاب وممثلي المجالس في البحرين التي تعتبر إرثا اجتماعيا عريقا ونموذجا حضاريا أصيلا في تجسيد قيم التواصل والترابط بين كافة مكونات المجتمع وتقوية النسيج الاجتماعي وإن دورها التنويري والتوعوي يجعلها علامة مميزة للمجتمع البحريني بعاداته وتقاليده العربية التي نفتخر بها وشريكا في تحقيق الأمن ولا يخفى عليكم أيها الأخوة إن أي إنجاز أمني يتحقق يكون هدفه المواطن ضمن شراكة مجتمعية قائمة على التعاون والانتماء والشعور بالمسؤولية تجاه الوطن ويسعدني في هذا الجمع المبارك أن أطلعكم على ما عكسته التقارير الأمنية من إحصاءات إيجابية ولله الحمد فيما يتعلق بمعدل الجريمة في البحرين حيث انخفض المعدل العام للجريمة على مدى السنوات الأربع السابقة بنسبة 30% ويسعدني أن أشارككم هذا الإنجاز الأمني المتميز والذي يعود في تقديري إلى عدد من الأمور الرئيسية وفي مقدمة ذلك المشروع الملكي الإصلاحي لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه الذي جعل من المواطن الهدف الأسمى في ممارسة حقوقه السياسية بعدالة ومسؤولية وتوفير الحياة الكريمة للمواطنين في أجواء من الطمأنينة والسكينة والاحترام وهو مصدر ومبعث الثقة والدافعية الوطنية التي جعلت من المواطن البحريني بأن يكون هو المبادر في حفظ الأمن والنظام العام والشريك الرئيس في منظومة الطمأنينة والاستقرار والأمر الآخر هو النهج المبارك والعمل الجاد الصادق الذي سارت عليه الحكومة الموقرة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله بأن يقدو المواطن الركيزة والوسيلة والشريك الأساس في مسيرة النهضة الحديثة بنهج حكومي لافت وهو الأمر الذي عزز الأمل لدى المواطنين ومن بين ما تضمنته منظومة الإجراءات الحكومية التي عالجت الواقع وتجاوزت المواقف الصعبة انخفاض معدل البطالة والتصميم على إصلاح سوق العمل والمعالجات المتميزة لجائحة كورونا التي أبهرت العالم من خلال رئاسة سموة للفريق الطبي للتصدي للجائحة إضافة إلى التحول الرقمي في تقديم الخدمات وتطوير الأداء الحكومي كذلك الإدارة المالية المتميزة والرقابة الإدارية والمالية المتمثلة في المساءلة والمحاسبة والمشاريع الإسكانية للمواطنين ضمن برامج زمنية محددة ويأتي كل هذا على كل حال في ظل توجيهات وتطلعات سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعه الحضور الكريم إن المشاركة الفاعلة للمواطن في هذا الإنجاز الأمني إلى جانب تقديم الخدمات الشرطية والأمنية على مستوى عال من الاقتدار والتخصص والانضباطية يضع أمامنا قراءة واضحة لثنائية الشراكة في المعادلة الأمنية بين المواطن 
والشرطة والمسؤولية المشتركة في حفظ الأمن والنظام العام ويسعدني في وجودكم التأكيد على تعزيز مفهوم الشراكة المجتمعية جعل الأمن مسؤولية الجميع وعزز مفاهيم الولاء والانتماء والمواطنة الصالحة والحس بالمسؤولية بمعنى أن الشراكة المجتمعية لم تعد مفهوما نظريا بل أصبحت قدوة حية نابعة من قيم البحرين الأصيلة مع التأكيد على أن شرطة البحرين تستمد رسالتها الأمنية من قيم وثقافة المجتمع البحرين ودوره الفاعل في إرساء مبادئ الأمن والسلام مما مكنها من الحفاظ على استتباب الأمن وبث الطمأنينة والسكينة لأبناء المجتمع وإني شاكر لكل من ساهم في حفظ أمن واستقرار البحرين وفي هذا السياق فإنني أثمن دور الإعلام على اختلاف أنواعه ووسائل فهو عين الحقيقة والباحث عنها فكان له الدور الكبير في هذا الإنجاز الأمني وذلك في نقله الصورة الكاملة والصادقة بحيادية وتجرد وتغطية الجهود الأمنية المخلصة في حفظ الأمن والنظام العام والشكر موصول إلى كل جهد إعلامي ساهم في ذلك الحضور الكريم إن البحرين تملك إرثا حضاريا ونموذجا ديمقراطيا متميزا وانطلاقا من مسؤوليتنا الأمنية الوطنية فإن الأمر يتطلب منا جميعا المحافظة على الأمن وضمان الاستقرار خاصة وإننا نعيش في الأيام القادمة مع استحقاق دستوري متمثل في إجراء انتخابات مجلس النواب والمجالس البلدية باعتبار أن المشاركة في الانتخابات هو تعبير صادق عن مستوى المسؤولية الوطنية بإذن الله وإننا نعمل معكم كشراكة حقيقية في توفير الحماية الأمنية لسير الانتخابات القادمة لنشر الطمأنينة بين المواطنين بما يمكنهم بكل حرية ويسر من الإدلاء بأصواتهم وأداء واجبهم الوطني الذي كفله لهم الدستور مشيدا بالديمقراطية البحرينية التي تميز أداؤها بالإخلاص والحكمة وبنهج إيجابي مسؤول وذلك في إطار الهوية البحرينية الأصيلة وإن التعاون الوثيق والشراكة البناءة بين السلطتين التشريعية والتنفيذية كان له انعكاسه بشكل واضح على الاستقرار الأمني وساهم بدور كبير في الحفاظ على مصالح الوطن وفق حكمة ورؤية مشتركة للوصول إلى حلول واقعية في مختلف الظروف التي واجهتها البحرين وإني أختم بالقول إن تحقيق الأمن المجتمعي القائم على التماسك الاجتماعي يشكل المكون الحقيقي للجبهة الداخلية الوطنية التي تعمل بروح الفريق الواحد معربا عن خالص اعتزازي وتقديري لكل الجهود الأمنية المخلصة في تحقيق هذا الاستقرار والإنجاز الأمني وعلى تعاون المواطنين مع رجال الشرطة في حفظ الأمن والإحساس بالمسؤولية الأمنية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A number of effective programs and initiatives implemented by the Ministry of Interior in the field of enhancing community security were then reviewed, which proved efficiency and success within the constructive community partnership system, including alternative sanctions and open prisons, which are two programs implemented by the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, where Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al-Khalifa referred to the role of alternative sentencing in reducing crimes, 
noting that the decline rate this year reached 33.3%, adding that violation rates in implementing alternative sentencing decreased by 71.3% during 2021, and the number of beneficiaries reached 4,313. He explained that Open Prisons programme includes three stages, the first of which is evaluation, the second rehabilitation, and the third integration. The commander of the Royal Police Academy, Brigadier General Fawaz Al-Hassan, spoke about the summer camp programme, which is implemented by the Academy as part of the initiatives of the National Plan to enhance national belonging and consolidate the values of citizenship, our Bahrain. He noted that the number of participants reached 9,641 since the launch of the programme in 2009, noting that the percentage of participant satisfaction reached 90.3%, and the satisfaction rate of parents was 91.3%. The member of the Executive Office of Our Bahrain, Dr Yusuf Mohammed, discussed the stages of the National Plan, noting the approval of 107 initiatives. He also reviewed the goals and values of the CAFU programme, as well as the National Platform for Bahrain Experts. For his part, Major Nasr al-Akabezi from the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing reviewed the Philanthropist Initiatives stressing that 429 cases benefited from it. The recovery programme was also discussed, which was implemented by the General Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Evidence and was launched in 2018. The Director of the Programme Against Violence and Addiction, together Ali Amini, highlighted the programme's contribution to reducing wrong behaviours at schools by 56.5%. He also referred to the introduction of new curricula, including a cybersecurity, peaceful coexistence and combating extremism. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima Al-Surafi, participated in a meeting held by the World Tourism Organisation on the sidelines of World Tourism Day celebrations held on the island of Bali in Indonesia. She stressed the keenness to enhance the Kingdom of Bahrain's position in the global tourism map noting the importance of highlighting the role played by the Kingdom in supporting international efforts related to the development of the tourism industry globally and activating links with various countries and organisations operating in the tourism sector. As Rafi indicated that the participation of Bahrain in this global tourism event comes within the framework of the Ministry of Tourism's keenness to present the Bahraini experience in accelerating the recovery of the tourism sector. She spoke about the role of Bahrain in supporting the recovery of the tourism sector globally and the Kingdom's efforts to enhance cooperation, exchange expertise and actively participate in tourism events and meetings. Al Rafi also reviewed the qualitative developments witnessed by the Bahraini tourism sector within the framework of the tourism strategy for the years 2022 to 2026 in line with the economic recovery plan. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima Al-Asarafi, met with the CEO of the President of the World Travel and Tourism Council, Julia Simpson, on the sidelines of her participation in the meetings of the World Tourism Organisation. The Minister asserted the keenness of Bahrain on building bridges of partnership with different international tourism organisations as part of the Kingdom's efforts to increase its contribution to global trends, aimed at accelerating the recovery of the global tourism sector. She also gave a briefing on the outstanding capabilities of the tourism sector in Bahrain, including infrastructure and major tourism projects, in addition to the ambitious goals of the Tourism Strategy 2022 to 2026. Simpson noted the active participation of the Kingdom of Bahrain in various regional and international events related to the development of the tourism sector and how to ensure its sustainability. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima Al-Asurafi, held a meeting with the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy of Indonesia, Sandiago Ono. During the meeting, many aspects of joint cooperation were reviewed, including cooperation in the field of tourism between the two countries. The possibility of cooperation in the field of tourism training, tourism and hotel education, exchange of successful experiences in the field of tourism, cooperation and participation in international exhibitions organised by both countries, in addition to exchanging experiences on tourism activities and professions and incentives for investment in the tourism field was also discussed. Al-Sarafi expressed her thanks and appreciation for hosting the conference, 
which confirmed the keenness of Indonesia to strengthen cooperation in various tourism sectors across the countries. The Arab Regional Centre for World Heritage launched the events of the World Heritage Day in the presence of the chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Centre, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The events are organised on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Regional Centre in Bahrain and the 50th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention. Sheikh Ahmed affirmed that the centre achieved valuable accomplishments in light of the generous support of the prime sponsor of the cultural work, His Majesty the King, and the directives and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She noted the importance of the strategic partnership between the centre and the UNESCO and the consultative authorities for the World Heritage Convention in preserving Arab World Heritage Sites.